Hey y'all, do you love middle ground? I know I do. Did you know that every purchase made at the Jubilee shop helps fund this show? If you're looking for ways to support Jubilee and watch more episodes of Middle Ground, make sure you check out our merch at shop.jubileemedia.com. Honestly, every one of your purchases goes such a long way and we're so grateful for you. Now enjoy this episode. I don't have science to prove why I believe what I believe. It's just, astrology has not led me wrong. Is there a way you can tell if you're wrong or right? Well, yeah, because I, I speak to my clients. I'm Ian, uh, I'm an adventure astronomer and astrophotographer. What I love about astronomy is sharing the passion of the stars with people. I question science all the time. That's the whole point about science. When I hear of astrologers, I think of people who kind of need guidance. Astrology is not a science. Science is something that requires proof, something that you can reproduce. I think astrology is just a belief system, and I don't think it makes sense. It's not really a science. I honestly believe that astrology just makes people happy. Hi, my name is Trenton. I am a spiritual analyst. I definitely believe astrology is a science. We have discovered so much about the metaphysics of things and energies that are hidden. I think my study benefits people because the greatest gift that you can give someone is self-knowledge. It gives us our own little map of ourselves. I believe that zodiac signs are totally relevant, but they're just a basis of a much deeper practice. They're the tip of the iceberg. Step forward if you agree. Astrology is a sham. You can believe whatever you want to believe in as long as you know it makes you happy, it doesn't hurt others. Um, but personally, I've just never really understood how, especially since we both we all study stars, how something that's so far away and that could potentially be gone could affect you when you were born. It just doesn't make sense to me scientifically. One of the things that they don't account for, astrologers, is as time passes by, there's this thing called precession where the, where the Earth's axis actually makes like a rotation. And these constellations were set like 2,000 years ago. And they still assume that these are the ones that are where, your, where the sun is when you are born. And also, you can't split them apart equally because each constellation has different sizes. They don't, you don't have the sun in one for 30 days. You just don't do that. And look, let's be honest, you can't divide people into these neat categories. There are almost 8 billion people on this planet. You're going to tell me that there's only 13 categories of what we are. What we are. Exactly. It no. doesn't make sense. Right. I think sham is kind of a, it, it, it's a negative word. but. From a scientific standpoint, we don't see that there's evidence that we can't make predictions on people's lives based on the positions of the stars. Can the disagreeers come forward? <laughs> <laughs> I practice Western tropical astrology. And so the tropical system of astrology goes off of the equinoxes and the solstice. It has nothing to do with the constellations, what you know of astrology in the Western world. I am also specialized in tropical astrology, and that's just one system in astrology, right? There's tropical and sidereal, those are the two systems, and they're separated by 23.4 degrees. It all depends on what system works for you. So does that mean you have like a choice or you like you see what everything means and you're like, okay, I wanna pick that one, I wanna study that one? Um, it's based off of what really resonates, right? And you'll know what resonates with you. You'll get this inner feeling through your chakral system um, and you'll know right away. Whether you resonate with Vedic astrology or Western Western astrology depends on whether you're more interested on using astrology for predictions or whether you're more interested on using astrology to understand yourself and validate and affirm the things that you feel in yourself. You say astrology, meaning that the stars do matter, mm. right? So what part do stars play in Western tropical astrology? It's not so much being born around the time that the constellation is in a certain place in the sky. You have this chart wheel and it's divided equally in 12 parts. So the rising would be dependent on that wheel, what 
sign, and not constellation, but what sign, depending on the tropical divisions, is on the eastern horizon. Then <laughs> the rising is the first house, or it's the cusp of the first house, and there's 12 houses. What does that mean? Because I hear that, and again, I, I'm not familiar with it. It just kind of sounds like a lot of gibberish. gibberish. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. If you think of a clock, the hand pointing to the numbers is not time. They just represent time. So it's the same when you think of the stars, the planets, where they are in the chart are not the energies that we're looking at. They're just representations of those energies. It's just the realm of possibilities that the way that you express action in your life could show up. When we categorize different planets in astrology, it's just to give characteristics on the specific energies. To touch on a point that you brought up, like how can we be here and planets all the way out there, how are they affecting us? Energy cannot be created or destroyed, right? We all heard that in our science classes growing up. <laughs> so we are all bits and That's pieces. That's not necessarily it. true. This is like essentially you're talking about like kind of, kind of conservation of energy and stuff like that, right? But like we live in a universe that, for example, may be infinite. Yeah. We don't know. And we, and we never can, because so, cause we're, we're limited to a specific distance yeah. to how far we can see. I and guess what I was getting to is, we're all bits and pieces of energy, so everything that exists in our universe is energy, I right? I think that we're getting confused with our definitions of energy. I think that's mm. where the, mm -hmm. like we have a different definition of, like more scientific definition of energy, and you guys have more of a... It's, it's yeah. Like a personality, <laughs> like spiritual, yeah, like that. Like yeah, a I think there's thing. a, uh, for science, like they, they have to be very careful about how they use the term energy because a lot of the times it can get hijacked or even delving in the world of like quantum physics, they use the word quantum in a way that it's not supposed to be represented as. My beliefs are supported by science. So <laughs> you guys are probably like, astrology is not a science. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is because it's, a, it's its own separate um, field. Right. Astrology has been a practice that has been used for civilizations. What now, is a science to you? What does science mean to you? Now, a science is anything that can be applied to the practical realm. I know we were saying a lot of talk about, oh, this is interpretive, or this could be used for predictive measures, but it is something that is practical, right? I have to use math, and I have to use other basic science skills in order to pull up a chart. I'm looking at degree placements, right? I think that fields could use science and still not be science. So you could use math and science and it still not be a science. Um, I think so science what's comes your with degree? Uh, I'm sorry, what's science. your definition of science? I think science is comes with fact. There's a scientific method, so you start with a theory and then you prove it at the end. Say we randomly discover a new planet in our solar system, sure. okay? Will it change what you guys Absolutely, believe? because okay. that would that would be something that we'd have to sit and try to study. We'd have to uh, conduct research on that planet just as well as you guys would have to do. You guys would just be applying it in a different way. So I definitely look at our field as a science. Are my beliefs backed? By science. No, they're not. In fact, it's the opposite. Most scientists would say that I'm crazy. Do I believe that astrology is a type of science, a soft science? Yes, because I study psychology, I study therapy. There are people who are saying that therapy and psychology are not sciences. I also think that psychology and therapy are soft sciences. They're not rooted in the scientific method. They are rooted more in the person in who that person is and the potential of that human being and their energies. But there's a difference there because in psychology, we could see, we could scan the brain and see the chemical imbalances. We could see what's missing. We could see the neurons firing. We could see exact, exactly why things are happening and we could prove that. So, but you can't but always we can, prove the treatment. But we can also look at a chart. We can also look at a chart and look at how the energies are interacting with a person and correlate it to what is on the chart. I think energies and like neurons. And, I'm, and I, I know I keep different. using energies, yeah. and that's also what I'm trying to say. It's somebody had to be like, hmm, why is that? Uh, why is that energy affecting me in this way? Somebody had to sit and study these things. Somebody, a team, had to do research on these things. I don't have science to prove why I believe what I believe leave. It's just, I've been studying this for seven years and I've been practicing professionally for four years. And I, astrology has not led me wrong. Like I, I don't miss. Is there a way you can tell if you're wrong or right? Well, yeah, because I, I speak to my clients. I, I never tell my clients like, 
this definitely happened for you, and if you don't agree, then you're wrong. I'll say, oh, this could be an indication of this. Is this true? And they'll say yes, or if they say no, I'll say, well, maybe it can be interpreted in this different way. That's also where the interpretive thing comes in, is that it doesn't play out the exact same every time, which is why it can't be pinned down by science. And that's science. why you can't call it a science. Yeah. Yeah. It's not reproducible. Science is something that is rigorously tested, and it's stuff that's reproducible. You have to be able to reproduce results. What astrology is, is interpretive. So you might misinterpret things because it's not really reproducible. Like, you're not going to always get somebody right. The reason why I didn't step forward for this prompt was because I think it's irrelevant. Like, I think beliefs are different than facts. And, you know, I might really believe in God, for example. I might, right? Um, and that's not backed by science. You know, science is science, right? So it doesn't matter if I believe astronomy. It doesn't matter what I believe. It just is or isn't. Celestial objects influence people's mood. I mean, if I'm driving home, maybe I had a bad day and I see the moon coming up. It's so beautiful. Like, how can that not affect your mood, right? <laughs> it's just so gorgeous. I do a lot of um, astronomy outreach. You know, I show people the planets or the moon through telescopes or total solar eclipse that we've seen. We were all like in tears. It was just so beautiful. So yes, definitely things that happen up there can affect. You know how the moons affect uh, bodies of water, right? The closer the moon is, the higher the waves are. The farther away it is, the lower the waves are, right? That's why we have tides, kind of, sort of, right? <laughs> um, but we're made up of 70% water. The moon in astrology talks about our intuition, our feelings, our emotions. There are so many other planets and celestial bodies that are definitely doing that. So I'm so happy <laughs> that you said yes, because it is definitely true. I'd love to know what you think about the correlation between the 28-day cycle of the moon and the female hormonal cycle. There must be something there. I'm not an evolutionary biologist, so I sure, don't sure, really sure. know. Yeah. yeah, I'm a Cancer rising, so I feel the moon, and I know from personal experience that, yeah, planets affect the moon. I'll have to say I really liked your interpretation of that. Because, what, you know, when, I mean, mo the moment that you stepped up, I was like, okay, I, I know what's coming. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know what it is because I do agree on that. I mean, look, Mars is really far away. So what is Mars going to do, like, you know, to, to my mood? It just, it, just, it just doesn't. Even the gravitational force that we, that we experience between planets that are further away, is, it, it's just, it's really nothing. <laughs> Can I ask what makes you say that with such certainty? Because I'm, an, I do physics, and so yeah, I know yeah. what, like how gravity, like the force of gravity works. Sure, but we have plenty of um, anecdotal, I guess you could say, evidence. Well, the thing is, if you believe something, right? Mm -hmm. you, like you already believe it. And then the thing that you, I, I, I really have to mention this. Like the thing that you mentioned about the correlation between like women's periods and 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 the moon. The moon is moving away from us, so eventually it's not going to orbit in the same right, right. in the same way. And so, what then? I think there's a big thing right now that we're using between correlation and causation. I think that's mm -hmm. another big divide that we're seeing right now. Like when people are like in a mood or like they're really happy and they go outside, and they're like, oh, there's Mars or the moon is full or whatever. That doesn't make sense to me where people can kind of not blame their behavior, but associate it with mm -hmm. what's happening. Like there's a correlation, but we can't see the causation of it. Right. And so that's I guess a that goes back to my, um, my argument that I posed earlier about how energetically things are affecting us. We're affected by this energy, even if it's so many light years away or if it's right here in front of us, right? Okay, now what if I, what if I were to tell you that let's say, you know, um, Beetlejuice is, what, what is it, like 400 light years away, 600 light years away? If we saw Beetlejuice go supernova, right? Mm -hmm. Some astrologers might say, oh my gosh, that's, that's, you know, affecting us. That happened 600 years ago. Right. So why is it affecting me now? Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everything that you see, like if it's something that's four light years away, you're seeing it as it was four years ago, right. not as it is today. I only can go off of planets that are actually like <laughs> like in orbit, like the moon, the sun, our basic uh, planets, uh, including Pluto. Um, that, those are the only things that I really focus on. So let's, let's, just, let's just go back to Mars and say Venus, right? Because Mars is, has all these uh, like really rough and angry qualities or you're whatever. You're learning, you guys are learning. <laughs> yes, and Venus has all these beautiful, calm and peaceful qualities. But what if I were to tell you 
that if you were to go into Venus and sit and sit there, you wouldn't even make it because the pressure would just destroy oh, yeah, you. No. So no. Why, how is that? How is that peaceful? And you know, like, what what is that? Like, where does this come from? There are no good and bad planets. I just want to let there. There's a highest expression and there's a lowest expression. Mars is not evil. It can represent aggression. It can represent anger. It can also represent action and motivation. Venus is yet love, relationships, beauty. It can also be manipulation. Like, there's no. Oh, this is a bad planet. This is a good planet. Like it. There's levels here, there's duality, there's highest expression, there's lowest, there's, I just wanted to, cause like, me and the planets, like them are yeah. them <laughs> people, so like we just got, you know, let's, let's, mm. I believe in zodiac signs and their predictions. I definitely do believe in zodiac signs and their predictions and what they could bring. And it all depends on how you're tracking the energy, how you're also communicating whatever it is that you can get from the energy to a client. That's basically what my job is as an interpretive astrologer, is to break down what I see on the chart and to communicate it in a way that you would understand. I just like was hesitant about coming up with predictions because prediction. yeah it's mm. the word predictions i i'm not of the belief that astrology is necessarily a science because i don't consider myself a scientist and astrology is such an interpretive practice that using astrology as a predictive tool sometimes does more harm than good it can create a lot of anxiety and sometimes it is inaccurate. You're going to get human error in some sort of interpretations. I have a lot of friends and a lot of people around me who believe in um, astrology. Um, but my thing is, I've had so many of them be like, what's your star sign? So I, I always tell them, well, guess, what do you think I am? And then it always ends up being wrong or like I'll finally tell them afterwards and I'll be like, I'm this. And they're like, that's so Virgo of you. It doesn't make sense to me. Um, so yeah. that's why I don't personally believe in those star Absolutely. signs. I know that you guys discussed that, but that's why I don't disagree with what you guys said. Um, but that's why I disagree with the prompt that was read out. With sun star astrology or sun sign astrology, uh, that's where it can get carried away. It's actually the rising that's most important because that starts your chart. What the sun represents is our own sense of self. And when you first meet someone at a party, how much are you going to be able to know off the bat from your first impression of them, mm. what their sense of self is. Exactly. Mm. What I think is that because we live in a world where we don't know people at all, if you have a way to be able to somehow describe who this person is when you just first meet them, it makes you feel safe. And that's why I feel like, you know, a lot of people take to astrology. People, like they think astrology puts them in a box. Like, oh, you're a Capricorn. This is the only way you can behave. This is the Absolutely. only way you can act. It's like, no, astrology is very much about the possibilities, not necessarily this is what you are, this is what you do, this is how you act, I don't like you. No, it's just like this is what could possibly happen, this is the expression you could possibly take. Would you say that <laughs> everyone has, like, all possibilities are available for everybody? Yes. Well, I mean, and to a certain extent, even if you are, like, say, a Virgo son, your Virgo son could be affected by a certain relationship with, say, Mars. So it's not like you're just this and you can only be this. It's like, no, you've got this. You've got a you know, sprinkle of something of, of this. It's People don't like me putting in boxes, which makes sense, but that's totally not what we're, I don't think it, it, what we're doing. It does, wrong. though, kind of sound like you're, you're still compartmentalizing yeah. well, things. To the point of like, there's 7 billion, 8 billion people in the world. How can you categorize them in these boxes? But the deeper that you go into astrology, the more nuanced it gets and the more personalized it gets. <laughs> The other side doesn't fully understand the study of celestial objects. <laughs> I'm so of two minds about this. <laughs> you guys are doing something that's very scientific and uh, practical in what you're studying. But just because something isn't practical or scientific, you can still study religion, you can still study the Bible, the Torah. I don't even think it should necessarily be equated to your study. For like astronomy, like there's scientific rigor into how we understand and how we know what we know now, you know, standing on the shoulders of giants, all the people who have studied it before us and now we know and we can prove what they've studied is correct. It's very like 
factual. I'm from my point of view as an astrologer, like I'm like, yeah, no, things are definitely factual based and like astrologers sat down and they, they've come to a common consensus of what things mean based off of where they're placed, what energies are placed on them. That's what gives them more of the component of what the planet may mean. I think again, that's where the divide is because when you guys could think certain things are fact, but I hear you keep bringing up that it's interpretation. Mm -hmm. so there's so many things going on way far away that we know about that, like you said, you don't really have the necessity to know about. I think that there's a lot of stuff that you guys interpret that we've disproven in a way, or that we've seen evidence for just going completely against it and negating your guys' points. Um, so I think that's kind of where that divide kind of comes from. One is the loneliest number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would never sit here and say that, you know, like you don't know what you're talking about. But also like, I don't think you can fully understand anything. I think you can go to school. I think you can do the work. I think you can have a very good grasp on something, but you can never fully, like we're talking about the stars and the universe and the planets here. You can't fully <laughs> understand <laughs> nothing in regards to that. You read the stars, you read the cosmos, you understand all of the sciencey things. You said Beetlejuice, I was like the character? Is he, kind of like <laughs> Are we, is he here right now? For me as an astrologer, I study the stars, yes, but I also study people. My job is to work with someone one-to-one. -one. I'm showing you what I see, but I'm also showing you what I see from you as a person. Would you say astrology is a lot more along the lines of like human psychology? Psychology, yeah. yes, absolutely. Okay. Depending yeah. on the system that you are studying. Yeah, definitely. It kind of means like that what, what astrology is, is like for fulfillment in terms of what benefits humankind. I mean, physics, astronomy literally brings us, you know, cell phones, that's practical. But we also, as human beings, like to have things like art, for example, music, I need music. If I didn't have music, then I might, you know. So it's kind of like, there's a fulfillment thing. And I, 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 I would, I, I get that. My belief is that balance is extremely important. And the way I see it, like logic and science and all of these things are one end of a spectrum. like. To get a little spiritual, it's like yang energy. And we're representing, in my opinion, a bit more of the yin energy, the human element. And I think that it's also important to do what you can on a person-to-person -person basis, and that will help humanity. Oh my. Great, thank you so much, and that's a wrap. Yay. Yay. We didn't kill each other. Yay. <laughs>